Hello, my name is Rafael Castillo, a data science student from Robert Gordon University. This is the presentation of my master's project, a requirement for the master's project module at the university. The topic of the project is electronic web-based solutions for chronic pain management with family, friends and pain specialist support. The topics of discussion in this presentation are as follows. Please feel free to jump at any timestamp if you want to know more about that topic. First, I would like to start with a brief introduction about what is pain. Pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience related to past or potential tissue damage. Chronic pain is defined as a constant pain for more than three months. There are some challenges found on the chronic pain field, and that is that pain is an internal subjective experience that cannot be directly observed by others or measured by psychologic markers. Because of this intangible nature of pain, studying and assessing it is a problematic task as there are a few ways to interpret or understand the pain. The incomprehensible nature of chronic pain is not just a challenge for the pain specialists, but also patients and their relationships with family and friends, causing confusion, anger, and affecting the effectiveness of their communication. Research reveals that the best way to cope with chronic pain is through pain management techniques. As of lately, paper-based solutions were commonly used. A doctor will instruct a pain patient to have their own pain diary to document every pain episode. Each entry must comply with a series of variables that need to be recorded for the pain specialist to make sense of the data. Some examples are provided on the next slides. As a result, the pain specialist or patient becomes more aware of the triggering factors of their pain or whether there needs to be a change in treatment or medicine. This pain diary example format was provided by the NHS. We can see that it already presents many disadvantages as it requires the user to have pencil and paper at all times. Writing and maintaining the diary is also an issue all of these disadvantages resulted in low compliance defeating the purpose of the diaries. This approach also adds complexity when making sense of the recorded data as pain specialists need to transfer the data to their computer systems. Electronic-based solutions can automate the task of recording a pain entry. It makes it easier and faster, hence improving compliance. Also, the way data is stored on an electronic device makes it more accessible and easier to analyze. After researching the top apps for chronic pain management, essential features and gaps were identified. Some of the app's top features were web-based, allowing data to be stored, shared, and accessible anywhere. Data was instantly analyzed and transformed into charts, giving users insightful information allowing them to make educated decisions about their condition. Some applications were highly customizable, allowing it to adapt to different cultural backgrounds and age ranges. After carefully reviewing the existing solutions, the following gaps were identified. First, research show that family and friend support enhances the quality of life of pain users, yet no app provides such support. Second, since recording pain episode is now easier, some apps have included a large number of recordable variables, making the app confusing to use for the users. Third, most of the existing apps fail to meet accessibility issues, making the app hard to use and understand for users with, their, with these conditions. Next, I'm going to talk about the project motivation, aims and objectives. Chronic pain affects one in every five people and is the primary cause of disability and absence in the workplace. The goal is to design a prototype app that offers great accessibility, is effortlessly usable and configurable, includes core functionalities found in most current solutions, and a new feature, pain specialist, family and friend support, which will allow chronic pain sufferers and their loved ones to understand each other and be on the same page. To achieve this aim, I have listed the objectives on the current slide. After finishing with all the investigation required for, be for building the app, the next stage was to design 
an application. The project design was based on the functionality of the app discussed on the previous slide. On this slide, we can see the first stage of the design process. This is a mock-up which was generated to help visualize how many screens and functional components the app needed to have. This slide shows the second stage involved making the mock-up interactive to behave like a flowchart, allowing us to understand the connection between each screen and component. This next slide is the third stage, the app architecture, which was built to clarify different aspects of the application. The last stage of the design was a thorough research conducted to include accessibility and usability best practices for the elderly in web development. A checklist with these practices was created. Moving on to the project development. On the slide, we can see a portion of a React component tree. This tree was created during development to understand better the relationship between parent and child components in React. The tree also made it clear how the information flows in the application. Next, we review the project development achievements. Regarding app functionality, all the most important functionalities were developed during this stage. This can be seen in the current slide. Following, we have the project development to do. These are the less important functionalities that could not be implemented due to time constraints. A week's work is estimated to finish up 100% of the proposed functionality. Achievements and to-do functionalities will be reviewed in the demo section of this presentation. Lastly, it is worth to mention that there was a big project development change. Due to the shortage of experience and time to learn Node.js and Express, the project architecture changed and the business logic was moved to the front end. This will need to be changed in the future to avoid security and privacy risks. Now it's time to talk about the conclusions. The prototype addresses all initial issues and gaps in the motivation, aims and objectives section of this presentation. The app's functional interface and security parts have been tested and no critical errors have been detected. The only minor concern is that when recording a pain episode, the back button re-renders a previous component which loses its previous state. It is worth mention that before the project started, I had little knowledge and no experience with the tools used to develop Tangible. Learning React, Material UI, and Firebase while managing the project, documenting information, was both challenging and rewarding. Now that I possess more knowledge and experience with these tools, I know which optimizations could be made for the future of this application. Which brings me to the next slide, Project Future Work. This slide shows optimization improvements that can be made for the app to run faster and make, easier, and make it easier to debug and understand overall code. Following this slide, contains some of the functionality that still needs to be included for the full functionality of the application. Lastly, testing for usability is the most important future work. Elderly with chronic pain volunteers are needed to test the importance of the spectator feature and understand if the application is fully accessible and easy to use. This will also detect all errors and bugs that might not have been found yet as well as new functionality needed based on their feedback and needs. Welcome to Tangible. This is the home screen. To our left, we currently have an image, but this page will be used in the future to inform a new user about the functionality of the app. At our right, we have the login and sign up functionality. In sign up, we can choose to create a new pain user or spectator account. In this case, we will sign in as an spectator. As we can see, there is no information shown on the statistic screen. This is the case with a record screen as well. This is because the account is yet to be linked to a pain user. We can also look at the profile screen. Here we can find the user guide 
for this app, as well as account information, paint scale customization, and spectator settings, which is currently empty. If we move to the Firebase console, we can see that a Firebase API is used to authenticate the user on sign in. As you can see, a new account has been created, and we don't have access to the user's password, as this has been securely encrypted by Firebase. Firebase also creates an ID that we can use to identify each account uniquely. We can also see the real-time database and how a new user is created with the information entered. We also have a pre-created account that already contains information about the paying user. Let's log in with this account. Now, let's create an entry for this user. For this, let's assume this account belongs to a 70-year-old paying user called Benz. Benz is not good with technology. But when recording a pain entry, Tangible takes the initiative and asks the user for the information to be entered, making this approach user-friendly. What was the day and time of your pain episode? If Benz forgets to enter an entry, he can fill an entry for a previous day. But as a default, Tangible shows the current date and time to expedite this process. In this case, Benz had a pretty bad episode one hour ago, and now he feels good enough to record the episode. As we can see, the questions are asked linearly, making it less confusing for the user. Where does it hurt? To avoid information overload and expedite the process of recording an episode, the user can enable or disable options shown on the main interface screen. In this case, Benz hasn't had a pain in the upper back for a month now, and apparently his neck pain has come back. Benz edits pain locations by enabling neck and disabling upper back and proceeds to select the current pain locations, tailbone and neck. How painful was the pain episode? Benz is sometimes unsure of how to classify his pain. For this, Tangible uses the two most popular pain scales, the numeric and verbal rating scales. In this case, Benz pain was disabling falling into the description of severe category between 7 and 9. Now Benz only has to choose between three options, making the selection process easier. Using the pain labels as a reference, Benz judges the subjective intensity of his pain. Even though he was disabling, it hasn't been as bad as other times, so he picks 7. What medicine did you take to ease the pain? Benz remembers that he is not taking Neurofen anymore and decides to delete this option. This time, Benz took two doses of ibuprofen 200 mg, which made him feel a little bit better. Benz tried a new therapy recommended by his doctor, foam roller massage, for his back. Benz adds this new therapy but makes a small typo. Benz can choose to edit the treatment and fix the mistake. In this section, Benz can choose to add any extra comments. Finally, Benz submits the entry. Now. Benz goes to the profile screen to send a spectator request to one of his relatives. One of Benz's biggest problems is communication. He avoids conversations about his medical condition so that his family doesn't deal with his daily complaints. This has dramatically affected his relationships with them. Benz tries tangible new feature which allows him to add someone to expectate his pain progress. He feels that this in indirect way of communication is more approachable and allows his relative to follow up on him on their own time. Now, we log out from Ben's account and log in as his spectator. In the profile screen, we can see an orange dot notifying the user that this section has been updated. The spectator accepts the request sent by Ben's, which updates the statistics and record screen. As a family member of Ben's, we could be interested in the time period section. Perhaps we wish to visit Uncle Ben's, and we know that the best period would be during the morning due to the low number of occurrences and pain intensity. Information also reveals that walking makes Ben's feel more positive. Perhaps we can take him to a nearby park. In the case of a pain specialist as a spectator, we can conclude that Ben's needs the dose of paracetamol to be updated as 75% of the instances show ineffectual. We can also read Ben's pain inf entry information in the record screen. To conclude, the application has a few unfinished components. A week of work is estimated to fix this box and add the remaining functionality. 
Overall, the app is mostly finished, and the next step is to test for usability with real users. This concludes the demo for Tangible. Thank you for your time.